Hi everyone, today we are here with Dan from Dan Good Jam. Hi. Hi. How are you? Doing great. Good. So tell us a little bit about you and about your business. Sure. So I am the owner of Dan Good Jam. Mm -hmm. I am 23 years old and I grew up here in Kinsman. I currently live in Hubbard. Mm -hmm. um, and while I'm not making jam, my day job, I work at the Economic Action Group. So doing economic development in Youngstown, you know, still a very community centric type mm -hmm. field sure. and still something that, you know, allows me to, you know, still fuel my own interests and mm -hmm. my own business interests. Yeah. So that's the basics. So but. tell me about your business. So Dan Good Jam is something I started when I was, you know, early high school and really I just focus on making, you know, jam that is centered on local ingredients, mm -hmm. stuff that I find either on my own farm or in our community at farmers markets and the mm -hmm. like. And, you know, I really just try to focus on a few very seasonal varieties. Right now I just sell it good intentions, but mm -hmm. I have a few plans in the near future to kind of expand that a little bit. Sure. Um, but overall I just really have focused in on this a little bit. In the past, I've been a little broader, mm -hmm. um, but I really think as I work to, you know, kind of tailor my image, tailor my business interest, I think it helps to kind of focus in on, you know, what Dan Good Jam really stands for. So did you start this off as like a hobby? Was this just a hobby or did you go into it going, I want it to be a business? Like, were you business oriented, like young? So. I think that's an interesting question because, you know, I think I was 13 years old, maybe 14 years old when mm -hmm. I kind of made a business out of it. Um, but before then, I kind of got interested in making jam and canning for my grandma. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she lived right here in Kinsman and I'd go over there in the summers. And, you know, the main thing I remember from her is that she always canned pears, and that's why I really wanted to learn from her. Okay. But, you know, as we kind of start start on that journey, you know, we found that jam was a really easy way to get into that. Mm -hmm. And I went over to her house, you know, one summer when I was probably like 11 years old with a whole bunch of blueberries, and we made jam together. And I think we canned pears together that year. And, you know, from that, it kind of got my interest going with that, interest in cooking, especially. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, I think a year after that, she passed away mm -hmm. and, you know, I kind of just really had to teach myself, mm -hmm. um, you know, about cooking, about canning and figure out what I really liked. Mm -hmm. And my friend, Becky Dobson, who lives nearby as well, mm -hmm. she has a farm and she wanted to set up a stall at the Howland Farmer's Market. Mm -hmm. And at that point of time, I also raised chickens and sold eggs. So I was like, okay, I'll sell some eggs, sell some jam mm -hmm. too, and you know, try it out. And that was probably like once or twice over that summer when I was probably 13. And I think I probably sold, you know, 15 or $20 worth of stuff right. a couple times that summer. Right, but you were happy with that, right? I certainly was. Right, And it Absolutely. was something exciting. 20 bucks in your pocket, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I kind of got the taste of doing business with having chickens and eggs mm -hmm. and whatnot, but Jam was really special, and the next summer, I signed up for the entire farmer's market season. And On decided, your own? Yep, just decided I didn't, I think I was probably 14 or 15 at that point. Yeah. Didn't have a license, couldn't drive, but I was pretty determined to just, you know. Figure it out. Have a go at it, figure it out. Yeah, and how'd that summer go? That summer went, I mean, I think I sold quite a bit of jam, mm -hmm. and it was a very good experience. Sure. But I, it was certainly at the the start of my journey, mm -hmm. and you know, I think I start out selling a jar of jam for two fifty. Right. And you know, reality now, I can see that that's <laughs> right. how much How'd it costs <laughs> to right. make a jar of jam. Right. But you know, it kind of you know, from there, the next summer I was doing two farmers markets. Um, I think the next summer. I went all the way up to four farmers markets a week, and that was pretty crazy because I do, you know, in addition to jam, I was doing breads, I was doing some candies, some fudge. Oh my gosh. And, you know, when you're doing baking for a farmers market, that requires you to bake the same day of your farmers market. So, you know, I had Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday markets, and really the only Free days I had were kind of Sundays and Mondays, mm -hmm. and 
I had to make jam on those days. So right. I guess it and kept me out of trouble. And you were how old at that point? I think that summer was probably 17 years old. Yeah. Perhaps, yeah. While most of your other friends were just running around. Yeah, I certainly a did a fair share yourself. of that. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, you found time. Yeah, but that, that <laughs> it required me to bake at like two in the morning then, right. so. You know. That's probably when you were up anyways. Oh, yeah. yeah. Certainly. So tell me, going into like your product, why, like what makes your product like special or better than sure. maybe some that you just find like jam on a shelf, you know, right. like if you just go to the grocery store and buy jelly, like what right. makes this better? Right. Um, I've certainly had a lot of jam in, the, in, you know, the last 10 years, last five years, mm -hmm. and I've gotten to taste certainly the high end of the spectrum and, you know, the low end of the spectrum from grocery stores or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, while my jam, you know, might not be extraordinary flavors or, you know, I might not be cooking it low and slow in a copper pot in a French kitchen, right. you know, I think what makes it special is that I just focus on local ingredients, mm -hmm. focus, focus on sourcing from local farms and mm -hmm stuff at the peak of ripeness. Right. And like you know, what? Give me some ideas of like what varieties do you carry over the year? Like some sure. different. So at the beginning of the year in the spring, um, a couple varieties that come out are spice and vanilla rhubarb jam. Mm -hmm. I get rhubarb from some of my family's properties mm -hmm. or you know, I just post on Facebook and people say, oh, I have this rhubarb patch from 50 years ago. Welcome to a small town, exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. somebody has some rhubarb. Yep. <laughs> so, right. you know, that transitions into strawberries and, mm -hmm. you know, there's strawberries all over the place around here. Right. Um, peaches later on in the summer, I make mm. a peach rosemary jam. Oh, that's, that's quite fantastic. nice. Fantastic. Yes, it is. Yes. And then transitioning into the fall, you know, you start to see, you know, apples are a great mm -hmm. fruit to use for jam. So, mm -hmm. I make a caramel apple coffee jam. So, you know, I really focus on, you know, finding what's in season, you know, kind of taking a step back from my old mentality of just making a little bit of everything mm -hmm. or making just whatever people ask you for mm -hmm. to, you know, saying, this is what I'm gonna make. I know I can get all of these fruits in season around here. Mm -hmm. I know that these will give me some variety all year round, mm -hmm. even in January and February. Right. And, you know, that allows me to kind of focus in on what I really want to make mm -hmm. and you know, make sure that it's quality products all year round, but also not overburdening myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is a balance when you're doing it on top of another job, like right. a, I would say a main job, right. you know, or whatever. Very um, much. We've, I think growing into our businesses, all of us, like I had a job when I started farming and, you know, my husband had a job when he started farming and right. pretty much everybody I talked to today had a job right. while they started their, exactly. their other business. Right. And so you're kind of growing into your business now. So it's been mm -hmm. years now. I mean, 10 years. Right. Basically. But, yeah, yeah. It's been like 10 years. Yeah. Which and, is hard to think about. Right. right I know. I, oh, I know. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about farms and but but you are a farmer like right. how's your what tell us about like what you do and sure. what your you know family th does and sure so you know farming nowadays can mean a lot of different things yes and you know i've grown up on a farm all my life and you know my dad you know raises beef cows and you know grows a lot of corn and soybeans and while i may not exactly be that kind of farmer right mm -hmm. now i still you know, have a very large garden up at my parents' farm. Mm -hmm. I still, you know, I just, my wife and I just bought a house in Hubbard and I plan on really, you know, expanding, expanding the garden that was there mm -hmm. and seeing really what I can do on such a small plot sure. of land. Mm -hmm. um, but I really want to kind of, you know, expand that garden in a way that it's not just producing food for my family, but also something that I can turn into a business as well, mm -hmm. something that can supplement Dan Good Jam. And, sure. Um, well, the more you grow, the less you buy. Exactly. So right. if you have the space to do it, then that right. just makes sense to do it right. on your own if you can. Exactly. And that's, you know, to a certain extent, you know, I feel comfortable um, growing a little patch of rhubarb and supplying myself, right. um, you know, trying to grow more fruit trees so I can get, you know, my own apples and peaches. Mm -hmm. But some things, you know, like strawberries, if I started pursuing that route, I'd have, you know, a whole field of strawberries and my entire time would probably be devoted to strawberries. So, strawberries, yeah. you know, some things I like 
having those other farmers in the community that focus on that and that I can also support because, you know, when I grow, I like to, I like to grow a lot of, you know, specialty beans and corns and other things that, you know, aren't quite as, I guess, intensive as yep, fruit mm -hmm. and or Concord grapes, you know. Yeah. Leave that to the people up by Lake Erie. Yep. Yeah. Yes, we do right. the same thing. Exactly. So like we, we are very specialized in what we do, but we right. also there are some things that we're just going to go. No, exactly. we don't do that. Like yeah. we're just we'll buy them. Like right. it's fine. Right. Um, so tell me. So a lot of things starting with your grandmother. Right. Um, she inspired you. Certainly. So like, what inspires you? Who inspires you? Like in your life. I think the biggest who for who inspires me is my wife. She's a very motivated person. And, you know, sometimes my motivation isn't at its highest mm -hmm. and she's always great at pushing me and or just simply reminding me of what I want to do and, you know, what my dreams are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, certainly she helps push Dan Gajam forward and, you know, I think just the excitement that she brings to my life for, you know, pushing this kind of work and my dreams, it really helps me do a lot of this. Because it's who you are. Right. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, I, I need that little extra push mm -hmm. to really act on things. Yep. And, you know, that's what she's there for in my life. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for what inspires me to kind of make jam, you know, grow into the farmer that I want to be, mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's just been my whole life, mm -hmm. you know, from growing up on the farm and being in this community and seeing, you know, farming all around me and just mm -hmm. the things that make me happy and the things that make me feel like home, mm -hmm. you know, I think that really inspires me to do more of it and just to see all the different ways of, you know, growing your own food and making that support your lifestyle mm -hmm. and, you know, your own community, I think just really inspiring to see just the potential that's there mm -hmm. and There's just of all of the good that you can do for the world just by doing this kind of work. Well, and I think generation generation too, like as I talk to different farmers and I talk to different people, farming may look different and it looks right. different today than it did 20 years ago and it looks different, you know, and, right. and I think I think a lot of us nowadays in this time frame are, are, are reinventing what it looks like to be a farmer and right. you look like an upcoming 2022 farmer like it, sure. it, it you know it it we don't I, I'm gonna say we because I don't think I do either but we don't sure. look like your traditional farmer like when Certainly. people say like what do you do and you and you say farm they right. kind of kind of do a double take or whatever but sure. you know I think you're inspiring because you 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 take that um what you've learned but also life experience and things that you're passionate about and you're just like kind of creating your own way you're creating right. your own way to inspire others and you know this time this generation yeah. um so like what where do you see you going with this like what what's your vision now so you know my vision at least for the short term is that i'd really like to expand on what i grow in the garden maybe perhaps the scale Mm -hmm. that I grow and you know start doing farmers markets again mm -hmm. to a certain extent because it does require a lot of time and a lot of energy so but I'd like that to be a way that I can get it back into it mm -hmm. I think it's a great uh, strategy for kind of testing your ideas mm -hmm. and testing your ability to act, you know to you know act on your ideas and your dreams mm -hmm. and be able to mm -hmm. you know meet the scale that you'd like and it is good feedback. Right. I mean, it really is. Certainly. We did farmers markets for years. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it really, that's probably how I met you. Is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's how yeah. I met you was through a farmers market. Certainly, probably market. 10 years yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah, it's probably been 10 years. Um, so, you're looking right now, you're kind of in this new phase of it. It's right. like you've kind of like backed off for a little bit and now right. you're going forward. So, yes. now you have kind of a, a new vision. Right. And I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, I did farmers markets pretty extensively from sophomore year of high school to senior year of high school mm -hmm. and as the week before I moved into dorms at YSU mm -hmm. is the last time I went to farmers markets mm -hmm. and you know I did Dan Good Jam during mm -hmm. college you know mm -hmm. it certainly I mean it is my nickname for anybody that knows me from right, YSU right, yeah. so you know good I, and bad about that right oh, certainly, yeah right yeah but 
so I was still doing it, you know, and taking orders here and there, mm -hmm. but I really didn't do much about it. And, but I actually, you know, I think that's probably the best thing that I could have done because, right. you know, but back then I had a different label, a different philosophy about all of this, mm -hmm. um, you know, a different set of standards for myself. Mm -hmm. And I think after college, when I was able to kind of focus on this again, mm -hmm. I could think about it in an entirely different way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, redid the whole labeling, mm -hmm. the way I did things, you know, probably in high school, you know, I probably made up to like a hundred different flavors of jam just right. throughout the year, just make whatever I came to think about. But that's crazy talk now. Yeah. Like yeah. Really, <laughs> it I could really do that. is now, And right. I mean, just the matter of, you know, shaping your labeling around that strategy sure. is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So now well, that I'm I've, glad I really had to like find you. Oh yeah. Like I really wanted right. your product in my store. Yeah. And so it, it, I was very, I feel privileged that you sure. did choose to be in my store. Right. I mean, for me, it's added value to the things that I sell. Right. And I'm very proud to carry your product. I think when people come in and they are looking for it and I see them buy two, three, four different ones off the shelf, right. you know, on one end I want to go, wait, like, because yeah. <laughs> I know you do other things. Yeah. But so thank you for like coming so, back into this and being part of, you know, good intentions. Of course. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm good luck to you. I, I'm thank excited you. to see where you're going. Thank you very much. Yeah. And really, I mean, the biggest thank you is to you because I don't think without you coming to me, I don't know that Danga Jam would be at this point or my level of, you know, where I am at with my plans and my inspiration. I don't think I would be right here, right now. Aw, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you.